Hey, what's going on everyone? Matthew from the RightTrader.com back again with another video. Today we're going to be covering a lot of topics. We're going to be going over stocks, cryptos, and gold and silver. So I'm going to do a very big market overview. And I just wanted to say make sure to subscribe for timely updates on the markets. I've been pretty much 100% accurate with all the predictions I've made. Where we're going to bounce if we look at the S&P 500. The first bounce level that I had run out was 232. Where did we bounce? Exactly 232. If you don't believe me, go and take a look at my previous videos. I was spot on. Now, that's not to say that we might not fall lower, but for now, I think we finally found a bit of stabilization. And I actually think that in the next couple of days, maybe the next week or two, we're actually going to start to see some moves higher. Now, we might still get some moves, uh, you know, that are kind of up and down. But for now, in the shorter term, we're finally seeing some stabilization happen across not only stocks, but crypto as well. If we go ahead and take a look at the general market overview, we're seeing a lot of green, finally. So I'm very happy to see this. Bitcoin now at $6,200, up 15%. Ethereum up around 17%. In fact, if we go ahead and look at the top 100 coins by market cap over the past 24 hours, right here in the middle, you'll see that most cryptos are actually up 15 to 20% in the past 24 hours. So finally, a spike higher. And like I said, I don't think that this is out of nowhere. I actually think that this makes sense for a few reasons. For one, we finally reached support levels, not only on stocks, like I said, at $232, but if we go ahead and take a look at the Bitcoin chart, and by the way, I will be covering a couple cryptos and a couple stocks in this video, hopefully. But if we go ahead and take a look at the Bitcoin chart, you're going to see that, like I had said, we were going to bounce around $4,800. We did uh, very shortly drop a little bit below that, but overall the bounce level was at 4,800, right? This uptrend line right here, and we bounced off that. Now we're moving higher, we're back above the 30 line on the RSI. That is an extremely bullish sign. Uh, I should actually draw out our downtrend line on the RSI, and we need to watch for a break uh, above that, which, you know, we're almost breaking above it right now as we speak. So uh, that will be a even better sign if we exit this downtrend on the RSI. We also see the MACD that's starting to curl back up to the positive area. And just going to zoom in a little bit more here so you can get a better idea of what I I've been talking about, I should say, which is a bounce around this 5,000, uh, 4,800 area, which is exactly what happened. We're now back above that significantly, back at 6,200. And what did I say after that? I said that we we're going to get some up and down price action for a while actually could last uh, into 2021, April 2021. So this could last a full year of just up and down price action. But the plus side is that uh, there's a fair chance that we won't be falling any lower, at least until we reach this area here, at which point, I mean, who knows what could happen? It could fall lower or higher. I would hope and think that we have every chance to move higher after that. But at least we should not be falling lower, right? And it's pretty clear at this point that, I mean, if we go back below $5,000, then there's very much a reason for concern, and we could be heading down to $3. I don't see that happening. I think that we're just going to start stabilizing and consolidating for quite some time. On this bounce specifically, it looks like we could get back up to the white line, which is the middle Bollinger Band, a very typical area to bounce back at, and we already have some support and resistance over there. So that would be around $7,267, which is right around the middle of our symmetrical triangle pattern. Let's quickly take a look at some news headlines. Now, what we just saw today is that Trump announced uh, some promising advancements for medicine. And I actually did my personal research on this medicine a few days ago. It looks very promising. So I think that we're going to start to see finally some good developments as far as that is concerned. And that is going to be good for, you know, all the markets in general, I believe, right? So we're seeing finally some good headlines. Also bouncing uh higher is oil. So that is very good as well. Now let's go back to the charts here. And let me go to the SPY ETF, S&P 500 ETF. And I'm just going to do a bit of a recap here of what we're seeing. Now, like I said, for a bounce for stocks is something that I expect. Now, how high are we going to bounce? That is a little bit trickier for stocks because I don't see, I mean, unless things are really good, stocks necessarily jumping all the way back up to 284 on the SPY ETF, right? That would seem a little bit high for what's going on. I mean, bouncing to 250, that would make sense. Even a little bit higher, maybe 260, that's still reasonable. 
after that, it gets a little bit harder. And it also depends how long are we going to stay in this range between, you know, 232 and let's say $270. I think that we could stay in here for a while, but we could also, you know, move lower like I had said in the past. So as far as that is concerned, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Any move below $232 again is going to start to push us closer to that $200 mark, at which point we can expect an even stronger bounce. For now, though, we're looking at more of, you know, maybe a slighter bounce and some consolidation. Individual stocks, however, could bounce higher, as we've seen on the market overview, right? I mean, we're seeing some stocks bounce only 1% or 2%, and then in certain industries, like some of the rights that I purchased, they're up 15%. And if we go ahead and look at my Twitter, which I've been talking a lot, make sure to follow me there because I've been very active posting a lot, we're going to see that um, I've purchased at the perfect time. I bought Realty Income, which I've talked about a lot of since times on this channel. I put my money where my mouth is and it uh, bounced, you know, almost 20% today. So huge bounce. Uh, I also bought a uh, other dividend uh, ETF, which uh, has been pretty stable. And, you know, I bought a few shares of for just a couple hundred dollars, um, but that they announced that they were stopping their dividends. So I sold out of that pretty quickly because I'm really looking for dividend stocks right now. I also bought into Bitcoin when exactly at $4,800, which I talked about a week ago. And that seems to be, have been the right move. So basically, if you're wondering, are we going to drop lower for Bitcoin and, you know, even a lot of other cryptos, I think that we're going to be pretty stable. Surprisingly, I actually made a tweet today. Uh, are cryptos a better safe haven than stocks and gold? It seems like it because it sounds a bit sarcastic, but if we look at it, it's kind of true, right? Uh, stocks fell a tremendous amount. If we go ahead and look at uh, the performance of the stock market now uh, as of the past year, we're going to see exactly that we're around a 22 to 25% drop overall, it seems like. And, you know, just a few days ago, we were at even more than that. So that is comparable, I'd say, to the drop that we had seen uh, in crypto on that big day where we fell, you know, around 40%. But you have to keep in mind, we're comparing cryptos and stocks. And right now, stock, uh, cryptos have been more stable as of the last couple of days. I mentioned this on Twitter. They've been more stable and have even bounced higher today than, than stocks. So that's something that is pretty significant, right? I talked about it right here. I said that... Uh, SPY futures were falling over 4% last night. Uh, they've been completely up and down. You know, futures have been either jumping up higher or completely crumbling. And then the next day we either see, you know, one or the other, but it's been a lot of up and down basically. For cryptos, however, since we got that bigger drop, they've been pretty stable and we actually saw them move significantly higher now. So if you look at it like that, some might say that the stock market is even more man manipulated than crypto. And I mentioned how free market is the best market. I think a lot of the positive market moves that we've seen in crypto, although we did see a big drop that one day, is due to the fact that it is, you know, mostly deregulated and is a pretty pure form of a free market, which is arguably not the case with the stock market where they're activating trading halts uh, every other day. So as far as gold is concerned, which is something that I've been talking about as well, some of you might be interested uh, because I have purchased some gold just as a sort of defensive uh, protection mechanism. You can see a picture of that on my Twitter. Uh, it's pretty cool just to have, you know, that backup there. And I'm not really expecting to necessarily make a huge profit on it or anything. It's more just for uh, defensive purposes. If we look at what happened with gold and silver, we saw silver drop quite a bit, right? I'm not gonna lie, silver did drop a fair amount, as you can see. Gold, however, has been much more stable, you know, arguably not moving all that much and gold just tends to go up over time as well. I mean, we have a lot of history and data to back that. So silver did take a hit, gold pretty stable. What do I think about that? I think that um, they both have a chance to do well. A lot of that depends on, you know, if fear is gonna subside or if it's gonna increase. I think that gold is probably gonna do well regardless and is probably gonna move higher uh, if the market recovers or doesn't recover. I think that gold is moving towards $2,000 regardless. Silver could get a move if the fear increases. And as soon as we start to see gold move higher right into that $2,000 range, which I think is very likely based on this cup and handle pattern on the chart, then I think we should see silver move higher as well and start to move back towards $20 very quickly. 
right? Silver has actually uh, outperformed gold on a percentage-wise scale during uh, spikes pretty significantly. So that is also something to keep in mind there. And with that being said, this completes the end of this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching and have a great day. Like I said, make sure to follow me on Twitter for those live market updates. You don't want to miss out. I've been very active. It's, we've got the whole community uh, talking together and that's been really good. Also, make sure to check out my technical analysis master course, less than $20, 30 day money back guarantee. And we've gotten great reviews now at 4.4 stars out of five. Thank you so much to everyone who purchased the course. Thank you for watching and have a great day, everyone. Stay safe.